all, I want to start by um, thanking some people that aren't here that helped me with some of this. Um, I made contact with Linda Adams, and she got me she got me this um, Sturtis Business Address from 39 to 62. It's an amazing resource. Somebody else in the crowd has one too. Um, so I wanted to, to mention her that I actually wanted her to be on the panel, but she couldn't. She had something else going today. Um, many of you know Guy Edwards. Um, in the past, he's done several programs here, um, one on restaurants and one on garages. Some of the information today, I have some of the pictures I've taken from that. I do encourage you, though, if you want more information on that, we have a couple of history high news on that. Um, the Sturgis and Meade County Historical Society um, has, we have the Bob Lee collection of all of his, uh, a lot of his photos and stuff. And we were able to get some photos from that of downtown Sturgis, so that's been a great help. Um, I got some stuff off of the Hotel Sturgis website. And then, of course, the Sturgis Public Library. Um, Lee Storstein and, and Chris and the, and the whole staff have just been wonderful at helping me get information. And um, I just wanted to, I'm sure there's more on my list that I'm forgetting, but I just wanted to make mention of, of those people at least. And I'll mention more as we we'll probably go through here. So, all right, let's. This is where it all started. In 1878, surviving elements of the 7th Cavalry under the command of General Samuel D. Sturgis um, established Camp um, G.J. Sturgis near strategically important Bear Butte. The camp was named after the General's son who died with much of the 7th Cavalry at the Little Bighorn. The camp attracted a community of vendors, in quotes, who was set up with the primary purpose of relieving the soldiers of their military pay by any means possible. This practice, this practice was termed scooping, and the settlement was appropriately called Scoop Town. Later that year, a permanent fort was established a few miles south, becoming Fort Meade. Sturgis City was almost, almost immediately established a mile and a half west of the fort. This time um, being named for General Samuel E. Sturgis himself. No longer being in a primary location, the community of Scoop Town packed up and moved to Sturgis City, immediately lending its name and reputation to the town. <laughs> While the early reputation of Sturgis was that of a wild and boisterous community, full of lawlessness and mayhem, the core of residents and business, business leaders managed to establish the basis of solid and um, of a solid and pleasant community we know today. And if you want to know a little more about um, the ruckus of the beginning of um, our downtown, Mark Rambo did a program, History of High New Life and Death of Old Scoop Town. I actually watched it. I was up way too early this morning watching. I, I excellent. He actually goes more into the details than I do on some of the the locations on downtown Sturgis that um, that I'm not going to go into. But it's, it's an excellent resource to check to tap into. Um, I'm going to I'm going to probably create a playlist on the library's um, YouTube channel of, of these of all the programs that that key in here. This is. Um, the Sturgis Sanborn fire maps, and um, that on the list, this is from the Library of Congress, and you'll see listed there. We start in um, '85, and actually it goes up to '42. The only ones I could download are up through '23, so it gives me about a picture of about the first 40 years um, of our city. And if you notice, the first one is one sheet. And we go to two sheets, three sheets, eight sheets. Um, the eight sheet ones, they kind of branch out into the more residential areas, so we won't cover those. But we are going to cover the ones for downtown. And then on the side there, you'll see a key. Um, as we're going through these maps real quick, um, just pay attention. The red or pink, I guess you could say, are brick structures. The blue are stone structures, and the yellow are wood frame structures. And what's fascinating about this 
is you'll see a lot of yellow right now. Okay? And then, see if we get a little more red and blues in there. And these should almost light over the top of each other. So that's, that first one is 85, now we're at 91. See how we're getting more blues and reds? So we're getting more permanent structures in there. See now we're, see now it's, I just thought this was just fascinating. So then since this is how our community was growing, just in those early, um, so if you see there on that, that one, now we have the Mead County Courthouse, and that was, um, and then that's, I just did a, I grabbed it quick off of Google. If you look up there, um, there's the Erskine building down by the, the 2023. Mm -hmm. And then you got the, the new courthouse building and then where the uh, police and sheriff, that's about where the old courthouse used to be. Okay. So the Sturgis area became part of Meade County in 1889, the same year as South Dakota statehood. The old courthouse, though built in 1894, doesn't show on the maps until this one here in 1903. So if you look there, um, you can see the courthouse. And then those three buildings off to the left there as St. Martin's. Um, and there is a program, uh, Judge Dickrich did a program on um, the old courthouse that it actually, it actually it did a good job of explaining why the building was torn down. Um, and then if you notice there, there's St. Martin's. Um, and now we see the chapel. It isn't there, it is there. The chapel was built in 1911. That's just some little side notes. Now we're gonna take a little bit of a walk down memory lane, or, or shall we say, Sturgis Main Street. Okay. These are some pictures that I really couldn't identify as to where they, what, what part of town they were looking at, so I just thought I'd throw them in there. This is why it's important when you have photos to try to doc, I know a lot of times we don't print photos out anymore, it's important to, if you do have photos right on the back, or uh, I don't know, a lot of times with um, digital photography, you can um, add um, metadata to it. And it's, it's, otherwise, we don't know. I mean, we know it's from the 1880s, but we, you know, we don't you know addresses, we don't, so yeah. Um, here's another one, Main and Junction. I did find that out last night that it was Main and Junction looking west. There's a, there's a lot of those more wood structures. This one, I have no idea. I'd love to know the story behind that, but no information. So, um, yeah. Then that's some kind of, that's some kind of chariot. I don't know if it was a chariot race or what, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Maybe it was the early crazy days. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Okay, and those of you on the panel, if you see there's a number in the bottom corner, um, if you see something of interest, we can come, if you write that number down, we can come back and look at it. Um, this is Main Street looking east. So you're going to not sure what block we're on. Okay. You're on the corner, Richard. Blooms, it was across the street from Davis, the Davis. Oh, Park okay, store. so where the bank is. And, and, okay. Yeah. All right, good context. <laughs> Good context. Now, I'm sorry, this one's a little bit um, pixelated, um, but this, um, from looking at the fire maps, I could tell it's sometime after 1898, but before 1911. Because the Erskine building is kind of almost in the middle to the right um, there, and it was built in 1901. And, the, and there was an addition put on in 1911. And the addition is not on there. Um, also, there is not a chapel at St. Martin's. So this is sometime between 97 and, and 1911. This one and this was done. Okay. This one um, has to be sometime after 1927. Because if you see, you can see the bank building there, pretty prominent. Almost on the edge of the screen over there. And then if you look just behind and to its left, 
is the Lutheran Church. And it was built in uh, 27. So this picture would have been sometime after 27. So, being we're talking about transitions in rural America, I thought this was a good one to start with. Everybody remembers this on Main Street. Um, actually, we used to have three of these in town? Or four? Three, yeah. Now we don't have... Well, I don't know if that one out there is even considered it. Yep. So this is where the site hack, I'm sure, is still um, in one of those buildings. I probably that one just on the edge of the screen there. So I remember when they tore that down. It was like I said, I don't know what the date is on this, but it's kind of an ageless picture. It was I'm sure it could be anywhere from the 40s to up until they tore it down because it didn't change that much. Was that east of the site hack? Uh, the site hack, I think, is would be in in the building right there on the edge of the screen almost, um, because the obviously the big part they tore down, and I think that one building in front of it they tore out. The metal building is still there. It would be west. So it's yeah, it would be just it would be east east of the liquor store. Okay, this was on the corner of. Okay, I'm kind of going in order of. I'm going to start, obviously we're on LaZelle, this is LaZelle and Junction. We're going to come up Junction a ways, and then we're going to head up Main Street. Pictures are going to kind of go back and forth, era-wise. Um, sure somebody can tell me the era of that from the cars that are there. But this would have been um, on the corner of Junction, and it would have been across from the bar down there that only opened during the rally. So, yeah, you're proud. Okay. You're proud it crossed from Lambert's. How's that sound? Everybody knows where Lambert's was. All right. Now, this one, this was actually a blizzard. must have been in 44. I thought there was a big blizzard in 49. This is in 44. So now we see the armory there. And we see that brick building. But there is no super duper. Uh, this was interesting. In 44, it wasn't there. And then, now, we've got their Super Duper, and that was in 59. And the Westerner Cafe, there were the appliance uh, stores now. Okay. This is on the corner of Junction in Maine. It is where the uh, Motorcycle Museum is now. Um, so, yeah. And, and there again, if you want to, this... I got this picture from Guy Edwards' program on service stations. So if you want to go back and get more information on that, you can do that there. I thought this was an interesting photo. Somebody asked me, was that the KKK? No, it actually isn't. These are these are World War One recruits, band, and nurses. That's not the KKK. It's nurses. So, um, and if you notice, that was also known as the Maxwell Station. Um, the White House in the background was the Grahams. You see it there almost on the top of the table. Yeah, still the Grahams, still, still there. And then if you notice, there on the corner of Main and Junction, a garden was planted on the corner near the war. So prime property, South, in Sturgis, South Dakota, was a garden. So and that would have been, like, like I said, during World War I. I. I thought that was a fascinating picture. Okay, and there he is. This was, um, I found this, it was a postcard and um, it was mailed in 61, so I'm not sure the actual date. I'm sure those cards could tell you. It's not a motorcycle museum. I'm going to kind of go back. This kind of goes up the street. I know this is the Grand Sawmill. I would love it. So I was going through things last night. There are so many other programs. I'd love it if we could get somebody to do a program on the, on the, on the Graham Sawmill. This would be it would be a fascinating topic for somebody to pick up. I guess maybe I can do that sometime. Okay. Now this is in about the area of the Harley Davidson parking lot. Okay. Um, and there again, if you go back to the city later tore it down. Uh, the Conoco Station was later built on these lots. Um, this here is probably the same kind of the same kind of view, only much. What is that? Can somebody tell me the age of those cars? Fifties, 
Sixties. Sixties. Forties. Okay. I'm, 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 and my dad was here. He'd, he'd probably actually tell you the, the year and the. It's great. He made him look at the front of a grill, and it's. Um, okay, and this is across the street. Um, the Midway Groceries, Ted Repair, and Skelly Station. This again was a blizzard. The blizzard of 49 has yielded me a lot of pictures, let me tell you. So this would have been the 1,000 block of Junction Avenue. Um, and then another picture um, that shot a little more up the street, you can actually see the Majestic Theater on the corner. Okay, there again, this has, I'm assuming there's a wagon there with a horse, so this would probably be before the 19, before 1900, but there again, I don't know, there's no, there's no date on it. But now we're looking down Main Street from Junction. Okay, and then this is probably the early 1900s, 1920s. So you have the Majestic Machine Theater on the right, or on the left, which is now Hot Leathers. And across the street is the Standard Oil Station, which is now the parking lot next to the auditorium. Um, this is Main Street looking west. The only context, that I, the auditorium was dedicated in 37, so this would have been after 37. Um, and a newer station is there on the left as well. So, um, and there again, there is a program on the armory that David Super did, so you can look that up. Now this is just a little bit, I'm kind of actually going back now in time. Um, we have some garages there, there's, uh, there again, we're at 1915 it says. Yeah, and a lot of those, a lot of those buildings are still, they're still there. And there again, there's the, the 49 Blizzard giving us more context. So, oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, and then this is Nav's Men's Store and Nick Barber's Jeweler. In other photos, I also saw that where Naps was, there was a studio, a uh, Seeloff studio. Yes. And, and one of them I actually saw in the very corner, it was, it was a picture of Negavirus, there was a barbershop there, and they too. I'm um, not sure era or anything. This was from the 1960s here, though. Um, there's a barbershop. Studio in '62. These all came. These came from the Bob Lee collection. Um, Chase's apartment store in '63, and they had. Um, there's the First National Bank there to the left, um, and Chase has celebrated 100 years in 1977. They were, and that's kind of a poster there on the side, kind of from that, from that celebration, I believe. The Lee store. Um, now that one on the left, um, I could not figure. I dropped it in there. I don't, could not figure out where it. I think I have it on that side of the street. I think I have it on the right. So what I'm going to do? We go down one side, and then I'm going to come back up, and we're going to go down the other side for each block. It was. It was on the. Well, when we moved here, Sakota Sound and Records was across the street. The Wagner well, Drums Theater, where Davis's store is, across the street, directly to the west. Okay. But I don't know if that's the building or not. Right. Yeah. I didn't. I. I couldn't. There. It would have been nice if I would have had addresses on the. There was some metadata on these, but no addresses, so I didn't know where they were located. Okay, yeah, there's Oscar and the Savory, that's um, Bob, and the Ben Franklin. Now, that was when Ben Franklin was where, uh, well, McKay Drug eventually went there. And then, uh, what is it now? It's, a, it's an empty building, I think, probably. It was on the corner. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right, it could be. Now we're going to flip to the other side. 
Now, I can almost say that's probably what a 70s picture. What happened to all the trees on Main Street? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we have the Steakhouse Cafe, which is now and Don's Watch and Don's Watch Shop. I remember, I remember going to the Don's. That was a fascinating place. I love watches. So, and then that's an updated front. Where Uncle Louis is now. And then Mary's Apparel, sixty-four. There again, here's another one. No car. I don't have a date. Well, you know those buildings have been there for. <laughs> Although I think the one on the right must have been eventually replaced with um, brick. Because I think all those buildings are brick down there now. So this is another one I'd love it if somebody picked this one up and do a program on it. I think it'd be a fascinating topic. Those buildings there. Okay, this is um, Carl's Confectionery from Domino's Pizza. I also remember as a kid, um, there was a, was a barber shop. There to the left, um, yeah. and I think both of them eventually became the people place. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. But I think both of them did. Did Joe DeJarlis have both yeah. of them as the people yeah. place? Yeah, yeah, Leonard's place. Oh, I don't. Well, I don't know about Leonard's place. Yeah. Yeah. Leonard's place. Leonard's place was the west of Charles Convection. Oh, okay. The Chat Chew Cafe was there. And then we're getting that. We're getting that one next. See, this is that. There's the uh, what is now Emma's. Um, but that that building was that's a 1907. So that building's been there a long time. And if, 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 if you need to have been into Emma's, it, it took out a back wall and you can kind of see some of the... The, uh, yeah, no, it's cool. I like, I like it. So there's the chat shoe. And then... Okay, and then this one, now we're looking back the other direction. And the only thing I wanted to point out on that, notice on this one, and this was brought out in Guy Edwards' Um, if you notice, do you see anything interesting about both sides of the street there? Look at the cafes. Yeah, lots of <laughs> But there's a Bruner cafe on both sides. <coughs> Not sure why. Sure okay, I remember when Guy did this, we, we weren't quite sure why the Bruner was on both sides. But he must have expanded and didn't have room next to him, so he went across the street. There's the Bowler's Cafe, so now we're going to go to the first street. Yeah, and I know this, there's a stuff on the other side, but I don't have pictures for that. So a lot of businesses we're going to skip because I just don't have, didn't have pictures. Uh, there's uh, Collingwood Auto Supply. <laughs> and then there's Harley's Hardware. We had a lot of hardware stores that down. Or Haley, sorry. And then, and there's the bank building. That is one of the oldest buildings. Um, you know, it's probably maybe it's about the oldest building downtown. Um, so now there's Weimers. Um, it was the longest running business at 79 years until the fire in August of 2020. Wrong. Davis Barbershop. What? Davis Barbershop is the longest running business on Main Street. Okay. It's in the, not oh. in the original location. Right, right. It's yeah. It's still on Main Street. Right. Well, yeah, got, I suppose. you got Owens Interstate been there since the 30s. And that yeah, that could be true. Street that went by there. Yeah. And then it turned into the old highway to Whitewood. Right okay. Owens Interstate. So, I guess maybe we can clarify. So, maybe the oldest, longest running business in the same location. We'll, we'll, make, a, we'll make an adjustment on that one. How's that one? Okay. Now, this one, I, I dropped it in because of what it shows on the other side of the street. So, we have an army... Um, our army's, uh, some kind of army surplus store over there, and there must have been a Spick and Span Cleaners. Um, there you've got the Benevolence Hall. Okay, 
So this was, um, it, and last night when I was listening to Mark Rambo, this, there's an interesting story behind this location. Before the original hall was built, this was more likely than not the location of a bar where the first murder in Sturgis occurred. The second more likely, the second one more likely than not at the location of the bank. So just a little tidbit of uh, our early um, more... Explain what the Benevolent Hall is because a lot of people don't realize what it is. Well, and this is... It's the Sturgis Hotel, isn't it? Right, it's currently the Sturgis Hotel, 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 Hotel Sturgis. Yeah. And this is another one that I would love for somebody to pick up and do a, uh, some program on it, because there's a lot of history there. Well, it had a bar in it one time, run by Bruce Barnes. Okay. The mayor of Sturgis. Okay. Bar, and uh, if I remember correctly, it was also a barbershop. Okay. Okay. Well, before they built the Benevolence Hall, there was a bar there as well, and that's where the first... You know, he thought that that's where the first murder happened. Okay, so now we're going to come back up the other side of the street. And um, the first business in Sturgis was the Harmon store and is where Black Hills Gold is now. I didn't, I didn't have a picture of that, but I found that out last night. It was, was at the location of the Black Hills Gold or Gallery 21. Um, so again, go back to Mark Rambo's program on downtown Sturgis, because he has a lot more detail on that than what I have. So here we have McKay Drug and Lund's Bakery. McKay Drug, sorry. I don't know why I always call it McKay. And there's Cozy Kitchen and Coast to Coast. We're going to see some transitions here with Coast to Coast. This one here, I don't know the era. All right, I'm sure somebody can tell me from the cars. But there's a parade. And there's a cozy kitchen, coast to coast, and the service bar. Uh, Lush Bobs isn't there, though. It must be before Lush Bobs. So there's another one. Not there. That one does have Lush Bobs, service bar. And then, coast to coast expanded. So, and now that is um, Tom's Tees. And then we have the Montana Dakota Utilities, Key City Lounge, which is now the Oasis. Why did they put that in there? That's kind of in between the two. So, okay. Now we're looking back the other direction, second main, looking east. This is approximately 52. Okay. I had to drop this in. We gotta get we gotta get the plug to the library. That's on Second Street. This is actually the one I have on Second Street. I thought about doing some more research on the other side, but I didn't. I just didn't get time. It just. Um, I thought I could plug these in there real quick. And there was a pro. We did a program on this. Um, actually, in last October. So. Fruit Hotel. So this is where First Western, our first interstate bank now presides. And there's actually a program done on it as well. So, um, and then there's Security Land and Abstract, 62. And then we're going to pop the other side of the street. There's Marsh Food Center. Um, there again, there was, uh, there was actually kind of a, uh, was a program done on grocery stores in town. Right, I'll give you. Okay, and then Trivi Sturgis Motors, which is um, where uh, Mr. Al's is. And I, I, left, I had to put that one on the on the right hand side there. I just thought that was an interesting vehicle. Um, I don't know. The car is fascinating, but that was like ugly sin, I guess. Who, who, who would be caught writing that one around that one? I hope I didn't offend anybody. <laughs> Wouldn't be me. Okay, and then I love the contrast on this thing because we have the Gamble store and the Fruit Hotel on the left hand side there. And then on the right hand side, um, so the the uh, garage went from that to Mr. Al's to Gamble's with a different facade, and now we have the bank. Fruit Hotel is gone. 
And there's a rainbow. Just about now. First, we have to bring up the Mead County Courthouse. It's up the next block. Um, and you can see St. Martin's Academy there. Um, the school there on the, on the background. And this is a new courthouse with the old one peeking over the top. This picture, I'm not sure if it's a 65 or 66, because uh, there was an open house in 66 for the new courthouse. But you can see the old one peeking up there on the right. And this is, I thought this was kind of, I'm not going to end here, but um, there's going out of business, and then uh, the whatever happened to the Key City Mall. Where was that? So, it's in 1987. Where was that, Richard? The Key, the Key City Mall. Um, well, it's because uh, there that what's being torn down is the lumber yard that was there on probably in what is now the parking lot, the empty parking lot next to Lens. There was, a, there was the um, was the Key City lumber. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the county shop was in the, the empty lot that's now in front of the um, well, across from Rocking Tree in front of the post office. But there was, there was going to be a mall back uh, attached to, to um, there's some kind of Key City Mall we're going to go into. Did Key City Mall Credit Union and the bowling alley? <laughs> In that spot in there? No, no, they, they're there. No, they tore all those down for some kind of mall in there. And I, I remember, I remember seeing the blueprints and everything. I mean, it was all. Wasn't it supposed to be connected to the? Yes, it was going to be connected to the lands. Yeah. 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 Right, right across from the flower shop. Yeah. Oh, it was oh it was there? Okay. And then on the other side across the hill was the state highway shop. Oh, that's right, state. Okay. We took the whole block and we county shop when we just Okay. Right, yeah, they're both out of town now. We have her on the edge of town. That's what they were saying earlier. All right. I had that. I came across these pictures, so we have to talk about Sturgis Creek. <laughs> so I even have a few. There's, there's a, is it Keith McKay or Mackay? Mackay, sorry. Um, there's, I don't, I have the names of some of those, but I don't have any idea. I do know a friend of mine, Jeannie Clement, there's on the end. Um, there's Barb Grossage. Alves and Roxy Williams, somewhere in there. And I don't know what, they're doing something crazy there. And then this is kind of, Crazy Days is a modern business promotion stage on many of the main streets in practically all the communities of this region. Um, so here on the July weekend, Sturgis, on one of its best, these two photos show the hundreds of people who have participated in the wacky selling day. So, the chamber always provided a pancake breakfast for the employees oh, really? and the business owners before oh, sure. the day started. So they got a oh, that's cool. <laughs> little tidbit idea. Yeah. And then, I, does anybody know where the end of here for this one? Yeah. yeah. Where Phil's bending is now. Where, where what? Phil's bending. Oh, okay, so it's in the same okay. so it's in the same place of always. They just rebuilt. I, I, mean, I remember going there as a kid, but it was the newer building, I guess. I wonder if that was where it was. Okay. That's, that's all I have. So now, um, I'm going to turn it kind of over to the panel. Um, I'm going to have them introduce themselves one at a time and give them about five minutes to kind of um, talk about. Maybe their connection to downtown. I actually I've got some questions here. Do I want to get those questions? Kind of give a. Why don't you let the panel? Yeah. Um, what factors caused Sturgis Main Street to be what it is today? 
How has it changed? Um, what has been the effect on the community? So just kind of keep those questions in mind. But talk about who you are and how you're connected downtown and, and your perception of how it's transitioned over the years. If we need to go back to some of those pictures, let me know and we go back and we'll just start a discussion. I can probably do that, yes. So my name is Rusty Molstead. I, uh, my family moved to Sturgis in 1953, the year I was born. My dad had graduated from law school at the University of South Dakota. I went to uh, the state of South Dakota as an assistant attorney general for two years, and then moved in to Sturgis and joined the firm with Dave Morrow, which he was with, with for just about two years. And then he um, went out on his own, and then Herman Walker, some of you remember Herman, Bruce's brother, uh, joined um, the firm with my dad, kind of off and on for a few years. But a couple of things, one of the photos that, that really caught my attention. So my dad's first law office was at the top of the Bear Butte Valley Bank. Oh. There was a long, <clears throat> steep yeah. stairway yes. up to the top. And he was in there just for, for, for a few years. But I remember that was, you know, the bank, that was quite a building. I mean, there really was, a lot went on there. And then after that, we went to where, right next to the, to the, the bank where the first Western Bank was, we moved there. Uh, so it was a good time. I, mean, I, I go back to there and I think of some of those old buildings downtown that my sister Margo and I, we used to mow lawns and do this and that. So we had like $20 that we saved up for Christmas presents, you know. So I remember going down to the hardware stores or the Ben Franklin or Chase or those places and buying a billfold or a tie or something like that. So it brings back a lot of fun memories uh, that have certainly changed over the years. Um, I think the changes that I've uh, noticed, I haven't been in Sturgis living here since about 1998. So, 1998. so I've been in Huron for two years. Um, I worked as an attorney there and then I moved to Rapids. I've been in Rapids since uh, 2000, uh, 2000. So that's kind of my history. So I've been out of the loop, so to speak, as far as some of the buildings and transformation of the town over the years that you've talked about. But I can remember, in my mind, and Dean and some of your business people on Main Street would know better than, than I would, but when the downtown started to transform, maybe more toward, I'll use the word, the rally, and it seems to me like what first happened, maybe like in the late 70s, mid 70s, I was out of law school then, is that the business owners, they would still own the business, but they would rent out their business to the vendors for a week or two. And then gradually, it seemed like more and more out of state owners took over. And so they actually owned the building. But I always felt sorry for the business owners because they had to move out. They, had, I mean, they moved out all their inventory from the shoe stores in downtown, and they moved out all their inventory for two weeks so that the rally people could have the, the store, and then they had that space. And they just gradually, you know, went over that. Gradually got worse and worse. So more and more, our town ownership and Main Street appeared to me. And that was always, you know, growing up here, I was always sad to see that happen. But things happen. You know, that's just how the way it is. And I wasn't really part of that transformation as much as a lot of you were. <clears throat> and then a couple other things that kind of struck my uh, attention, of course, was the old courthouse. Um, that's spent a lot of time in the, in the new one and not in the old one. But I can remember, you know, they always have some controversy about, you know, should we tear down the old structures, build a new one? And there's always that, that conversation and, and sometimes that, that dissent that happens um, between the, the people in town. But that was always interesting to me. Um, but I'd have to say that probably a couple of things that I saw there that brought my attention was the Graham Sawmill. You know, growing up, my dad was good friends with Bruce Walker and Bill Grahams, and, and you know, those guys were a unique bunch, especially Bruce and Bill, Bill, Bill Grahams. They were, they were unique. I mean, you just didn't find those people very often. So they'd go down to the sawmill, and they'd be down there talking politics, talking this, 
chewing her snooze, no, not my dad, but he was, he was, a, he was a cigar smoker, but those guys, it was just so much fun to just watch those guys sit and just talk about world events, just the, the city events, and just have such a good time doing that. And that was one of my favorite pastimes, you know, to go out and do that every once in a while. So I, I know the town has changed, I don't know what's going to happen to it. Certainly the rally has played a big part in the, in the community over the years. Once, quick story, I'll end right here, just for, I used to run a lot, you know, back, back when I was younger in high school and college. So I used to run from, my house was on Shepherd Street, but I ran, I would run up um, Junction, and I'd go out to the National Cemetery, turn there and go by the chapel, and then run on the gravel road and come back in the town. So it was, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine miles, wherever it was. And if you remember, there was a, there was a campground kind of behind the, the chapel back there. And so this was during the rally, and I was always a little bit nervous during the rally. So I was running there, and I got across the interstate, went over to the chapel, and there's a cattle guard right there. And at that cattle guard was a van, Bandito's van, and the guy that was, uh, there was a Bandito with a shotgun, sitting right by the van, outside the van, and he said, you're not going any farther. And I said, you're right, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned around and ran back into town. <laughs> the Bandidos had, had commandeered that campground, you know, for their folks back then, and they did it for a while, they kind of controlled the town, so to speak, so anyway, I'm always proud to be San from Sturgis, always will. Um, scoopers, people ask me, what's a scooper? And you heard yeah. out the down game. I always yeah. had to go through that story, so I've told that many, many times. But uh, anyway, it's great to be back, and you guys, good luck. I hope to see you soon again. Uh -huh. I don't know if I can follow that or not. <laughs> uh, my name is Dick Wise. I was born in Sturgis in 1937 on Main Street. Uh, so I've been here for a while, graduated from Sturgis High School in 55, and film covered, film covered about everything that I was going to talk about, plus Rusty covered a few. But I thought it might be interesting that um, you're talking about service stations. On the old Deadwood Highway coming down through and underneath the Vidoc, on the west end of town, there was a service station there called Larry's Service, run by Larry Sanger. That was one of the first service stations in Sturgis. And as you come on down, you get into, you had the old independent oil on the south side, but across the street, Fred Ritchell had a service station, right smack straight across from him. And that was in the 50s. Um, let's see, was there, and you talk about uh, Main Street and Junction coming across on the south side of that, one block up, there were two service stations across from one another. One of those, I think you covered in that film, okay. uh, but I remember those two being there. They didn't last very long, but they were there. And the Trailways bus station used to be on the corner, uh, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, grocery stores, which you might not know, we had Wild Booger's Grocery Store on LaSalle Street on the 1800 block. That was there. We had West Main Grocery Store, which came down a block and then it was on the side street. On the lower end of LaZelle was Dodson's Grocery Store. And that was there in the 50s and probably the 60s. We also had on Main Street, we had Red Owl, which they mentioned on the film, Doran's Grocery Store. Doran's Grocery Store, which was <coughs> down a block and on the opposite side of Main Street. Run by John Doran and their family. Uh, Piggly Wiggly, of course. Yeah, Haley. Haley's Grocery Store. And then, of course, Hobernick had a grocery store. Harder Barn. Bargain Barn, right. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name of it. And then, of course, we had you talked about the car dealerships that were in town. We had the Rambler dealership, 
which was on the west end of town. You had your Chevrolet run by Chuck Turvey, of course. And the Ford dealer, that's the one I remember, was not where the film showed. It was down on the east end of Main Street, across from the Davis Barber Shop. That's where I remember until they moved out to where they were. And then the building uh, where Pickley Weekly was, and that lady used to rent it for her deal. There was a red brick building that stood just by the alley. That used to be, if I remember correctly, an old Chrysler dealership run by Ted, Dries, and his brother. And Volkswagens. Pardon? And Volkswagens. Could have been. I don't remember that one. But, and they covered a lot of the, the business that I was going to talk about on Main Street, so I guess that's, uh, that's about all I can tell you about it. Outside of, outside of one fact that I think, and I probably shouldn't bring this up, what slowed down our Main Street was, it wasn't just the rally. The rally played a big part in it, but we lost our mills. It was mentioned there in the film. We lost our sales barn, which was a big part, because those ranchers came in every Wednesday. Every Wednesday and spent a lot of money in town. And our business at Owens, is, we suffered from the loss of those, of those businesses. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell you about Sturgis Drug. Now, if you don't know where Sturgis Drug was, it's on the corner where Bob Davis is uh, photo and gifts is. And that building, I think, was built in 1884. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, anyway, uh, we lived in Belfouche at the time. We moved here March 1st, 1962. With a, uh, and Dale had worked at Carter Grug in Belfouche with the lady, Alice Klein. And she said uh, to Dale, if he found a drugstore that he wanted to buy, which was his dream, to own his own drugstore, that they had a little money and they would help us purchase a lot of drugstore. So with the help of salesmen, you know, drug salesmen, they know everything that goes on in their territory. Uh, and they told us Sly and Freeman was up for sale. So we contacted them and they were willing to sell to us. But they thought, uh, they were renting the building they were in and they thought we should buy the building. So at the time, that building and the pool hall next to it and Archie Haley's hardware store was uh, in an estate. So E.B. Morrill, who is the attorney for the estate, uh, decided that he could split that so that we could own the, the building for the drugstore and the pool hall and Archie Haley could buy his building too. So. Uh, Dale and I were 25 years old, and we had a one-and-a-half-year-old son with no money. <laughs> so it was, uh, they had, it was just lucky we were able to uh, call, uh, do this. Uh, we were able to buy the building with Alice's and Spunny, and we, uh, we mortgaged the building and paid off Mr. Sly, and Mr. Freeman carried us. And we were welcome to the community, we felt. Uh, I think they've, the community had treated us well. Uh, we went to church and they welcomed us. We joined JCs. They were a big working organization and we got a lot of friends there through that. Dick is one of them. <laughs> we worked hard, the JCs. Um, anyway, uh, our logo for the drugstore was Sturgis Drug on the Busiest Corner. And that's what our, all our labels and everything said that. And, uh, we were open eight to eight, six days a week. And in the beginning, we were also open a few hours on Sunday, but uh, that was getting to be kind of long hours for Dale as he was working alone for mo most of those days time. Terry and Jeannie Cetera purchased Carl and Alice Klein's share of the business in 1969, and then in 1972, we did some extensive remodeling, taking the wall out between the store and the pool hall and changing the entrance to the store. Now, Dale's father was a carpenter, 
and he and Dale did a lot of the work in the remodeling. Uh, Terry took the day shift at the store, and Dale worked the evening shift. People would want to hire Dale, because he didn't have his uniform on, they didn't know who he was. <laughs> uh, anyway, there were a lot of businesses in Sturgis when we came. And I have a couple of books that were printed, one in 64 and one in 66, and it lists all the businesses, all the residents, and the residents, uh, the husband, the wife, the children, and the year that they were born, and the business that they were in. And so it's, it's been a wealth of information for me. But uh, just to reiterate what uh, Dick said, I found in that book, that we had 10 attorneys, two bakeries, two banks, 10 beauty shops, one bowling alley, one cheese factory, 12 churches, one Western clothing, three construction companies, five dentists, two department stores, three drug stores, two dry cleaners, offices for MDU and Black Hills Power, five grocery stores, five hardware stores, one horseshoeing school, one hospital, <laughs> two hotels, seven insurance agencies, two ladies apparel, two liquor stores, three lumber companies, one men's store, six motels and cabins, two newspapers, five physicians, three plumbers, 10 restaurants, one radio station, seven schools, five taverns, I call them pool halls, uh, 14 gas stations, I count it, one theater, three TV and radio repair shops, two variety stores, two veterinaries, four auto dealers, and one livestock exchange to name a few. I, I've got, I really agree with Dick, the livestock exchange was a very important part of our community. You know, and like he said, we had specials and so on. Uh, Anyway, Dale and I were both raised in uh, eastern Port South Dakota, but Sturgis is our home. Yeah, I, I just, um, what did you see, Bonnie and I had a conversation and, and she had talked to you a little bit about, what did you see was the reason for where our downtown went? I think you have an interesting perspective on that. Well, I, th I think it was the interstate and the mall in Rapid City had a big impact on it because it was so easy to run to Rapid and shop. And so, right. it, you know, some of the loyalty went to. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that got brought out. That's kind of, and that's kind of what we're talking about here is, is what happened to our downtown, why did it transition the way that it has, and even maybe why is some of it coming back now? That's, that's where we're kind of heading now. But I do, I do want, I always remember going into your store and um, looking at the gifts, and I think, I've always been in the airplanes. I don't know if it was either your drugstore or the one up the other end of town. Um, I always got the little balls to the airplane, and, and I just put that kind of stuff. But I have fond memories of your store. Well, Dale was a pilot too. But, oh, uh, oh, that's right, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. yeah. And uh, we we did we sold uh, Whitman candy and Hallmark cards. I mean, oh, they yeah. were top of the line. You had everything. In we there. thought. <laughs> oh, you had, had a, lot a lot of, of gifts. Lot of um, so gifts in there. yeah, it was a it was a good time while it lasted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting that there's that, that that's what's there now though. Yeah. To get to gift stores. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a, cool to see that come back around. Yeah, it's pretty busy in there now, I think. Yeah, that's good. All right. Our last two, they're going to actually talk a little bit about, um, I guess if you want to go back, you can, but they're going to talk a little bit about the future and, and um, what, what they see is going to be coming up for the town. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Candy Grubel. Um, this is my sister. We like to clarify that because a lot of people don't know. But um, <laughs> Tina Hobson, and we own Just for Looks Boutique together. Um, and they asked us to come today and talk a little bit about what we feel the future of our downtown Sturges looks like. Um, and we maybe have a little bit different perspective than a lot of people. Um, we feel we're like, right on Main Street. yeah, we're right on Main Street. Um, we own a small business, so um, I truly believe that the business community in Sturges 
um, its future is small business. Um, we hear a lot of talk around town about um, what we need and what people want, um, but I feel like the future is small specialty stores, um, giving people an experience when they come to town. Um, and when people do come to town, um, they come for a reason. And um, so when we were opening our business, one of the things we looked at is uh, what are the assets that Sturgis offers? And um, we have a strong history. Um, we talked a lot about that today, the history of business. Um, but we have the cavalry, um, but also the history of motorcycles. Um, and then also, we have a strong sense of community. And I think that's going to factor into the future. Um, people love it here. They have a strong feeling about what's happening here, and they want to support that. And also, we have a strong recreation in this area. We have biking and hiking, um, it, UTVing, and all of that factors into why people come to Sturgis. And then also, we have that scenic small town charm that um, when people do get here, they enjoy it. It's a good feeling. Um, so when they're here, um, if they have an experience while they're here, then we capture that, and then they're going to come back and they're going to tell their friends. Um, but that's also why people want to move here. All those same reasons, so that um, they can have the small town feeling. So I think um, as we look to the future, the small business is kind of what is going to bring that to the people. Um, so I think, um, in, our, in my opinion, um, the future of, small, of Sturges is small niche businesses creating an experience for people when they come to shop. Um, and what that looks like is going to depend on each individual business owner. Um, I think we have a lot of that already happening and um, some, a great business community that's already here and they're doing their best and um, showcasing Sturges in the best possible way. I'm just going to um, reiterate on some of that stuff. So we, we as a small business, of course, we were one of the businesses that had to move out during the rally when we first bought our building, and um, it was leased, just a, a long-term lease, so we had to move out. But we've been open for the last three years, three years? This will be our third This will be our third summer. So um, what we're finding is when we're going back to the to the biker community and, and when we have the motorcycle rally and stuff, we're open during the motorcycle rally now. And we're finding that they are also going more towards what, you know, the first year we were open, we decided let's get some, you know, t-shirts that have, you know, bling, more bling because we are a boutique and stuff. They don't want, they want different also. So they're, they're not, the, the people that are coming are not the people that want a t-shirt on every, in every building and, a, you know, they want something different. And they want small specialty shops. So um, they want to have that experience when they come here. They don't want to just keep going into t-shirt after sheet t-shirt and pins and patches and all, you know, they want that stuff, but they want not in every store and every you know business. They want to have something unique and different everywhere they go. And that's what all of the tourists of, that are coming, that's what um, people travel from town to town in our community. So we get people, we have people traveling from, they'll do a, a loop, like they'll go to Rapid and Custer and Spearfish. They, you know, they come up to Sturgis and they go to Spearfish, Belfouche. They do, they, they, they go around to different towns to find out what's going on in their small communities and their small business communities. Um, so I think that, that, yeah, the future of Sturgis is going to depend on some smaller business specialty shops, um, even if it's, you know, like South Dakota made things and different, you know, just different things like that. A lot of specialty, unique things for the future. You have so, anything I want yeah. to say? Um, we feel like Sturgis has, um, we all have that, there's a reputation of Sturgis and what's what the possibility is here. Um, we feel that's way off base. Um, there is so much possibility for the future of Sturgis. Um, we are Sturgis, who doesn't know that name? Um, so rather than looking at that in a bad light, we embrace it. Uh, Sturgis, uh, that we are so fortunate to have that nationwide, worldwide recognition. Um, who wouldn't want to come here? Who wouldn't want to live here? 
It's amazing. So um, we've made it our mission to change that perception. Um, Sturges, you know, when you say Sturges, sometimes people are like, oh, well, what can I do there? What can I get there? Um, anything. You can do anything here. And you can, you know, if you try hard enough or look around, there's a lot to happen. So one of the things that we really try to focus on and encourage is um, just greater awareness of local entrepreneurs and what they are doing. I think there's a real, um, at times we get really comfortable with what we do and where we go. So um, we just encourage the people that come to us to check out everybody else and to see what's happening. Um, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your Facebook page. Everybody needs to know all the amazing things that are happening here. And I think there are a lot of things that are happening that people aren't aware of. Aware of yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd like to um, make a couple of comments because I just, um, first of all, Noreen Creed was going to be here today, but she had, had ended up having an appointment, so it would have been fun having her here to, because she knows a lot, just being with the, oh, yeah with the uh, paper and all that, it would have been good to have her. Another, um, I had talked to Rod, um, Hotel Sturtis, right. and I think what he right. has done oh, for downtown has amazing. been, I, I really wanted to mention that, I think, um, I mean, I'm sure he took a big gamble. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Huge gamble of doing what he did. And I think that that's probably what it's gonna take more of. Yes. Absolutely. And I, I just wanted to mention him. He, he was, because this is spring break, he wasn't, we were going to, Doreen had recommended him and his mother, which would have been, Lucy. yeah, Lucy, it would have been, I was sad when that didn't, didn't pan out. I also had, had contact with Dana Caldwell, um, but he couldn't make it today because of uh, just some health issues and stuff, so he would have been another good one to have had here. So I wanted to mention some of those that I had contact with, he was, was um, so yeah, I guess at this point we can open it up for either conversation or questions. Questions or comments. Yep. Okay. Because I'm sure there's a lot of we got a standing room only crowd today. This so. is amazing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sid Reyes, and I I've only lived in Sturgis a year and a half. My longtime roots are here, but um, anyhow, we just got here a year and a half ago. We have spent quite a bit of time, my husband and I, traveling from here to Texas on little two-lane roads. And we also, we both grew up in a small community in the Sierras in California, which has died. I mean, there's, there's still people there, and they have one store open is all. And driving from here to Texas, we see community after community after community it started out larger than Sturgis, and there's nothing there now. And you know, we can go 200 miles without even finding a service station as we go through these little tiny communities that are shut down. My question for today is, and I, you know, my husband says, well, of course you know what it is, it's the rally. But why has Sturgis thrived through all of the downturn, through everything else that has has, has left Sturgis, you know, yes, the list of businesses that have gone and such is, is sad, but why is it that Sturgis is still alive when there are many other communities in the breadbasket of America that aren't? That's what I'd like to know. Western border two. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. My husband was called fairly stubbornness. <laughs> 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 That's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Any other comments? Would anybody like to reply to her question? Just a minute, Pat. Sure. That's a great microphone. My name is Pat Shaver. My name is Pat. Oh, that's loud. My name, I've been here about 25 years, and I'm and to answer your comment about, you know, why did we move here? We, we came from central Minnesota. Well, we came here because the climate is warmer here. <laughs> and believe me, it really is. <laughs> and uh, the snow melts in between the snowstorms. You know, you can see the ground in which, in my yard in, in St. Cloud, Minnesota, 
you know, when it snowed at the end of November, beginning of December, you didn't see the ground again until March, you know, um, most years. Uh, so we came for the warmer weather. We came because the mosquitoes here do not carry you away like they do in Minnesota. And those were the reasons we thought we had, well, we had been vacationing here for about 20 years, 1975 to about 1995, and we, we're, we're those bikers. I'm, I'm one of those bikers that came. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the rally. We came, um, we came also with our family. We loved the Black Hills, and we would come with our family in an RV, and we would camp other times during the summer, and we loved to do that. We loved to explore. But then we also came with a group of friends, and we came to the rally. But we didn't stay here in Sturgis. We stayed sometimes other places, you know. I mean, Sturgis was an event. It was a happening. It encompassed the entire Black Hills in our mind. And, the, and people would say, well, are you going to Sturgis this year? I'm going to Sturgis, sure. Where are you going to stay? I'm going to stay in Spearfish. Well, I'm going to stay. i got a place in Custer. You know, but it was all going to Sturgis. It was an event. It was a... It was a huge gift that Sturgis and the entire Black Hills gave to people like us who got together with a group of friends. It was a one time during the year thing that we got to do, and we, you know, we drank a whole lot more coffee than any other beverage that we drank. We'd <laughs> sit over breakfast and talk, and then get on the motorcycles and ride a little further, you know, until we got here. And it was, it was, it's a huge gift that Sturgis gave to us. So, and I can't remember where I was going. Okay, so then why did we decide to move here? Well, uh, so then we sort of got to a, a stage in life where, where my husband was going to sell his business. And we said, well, you know, and let's just buy some vacation property in the Black Hills. Where are we going to buy that place, you know? And, uh, well, uh, now we love Deadwood and Lead in the high places. But you know, the winter's a little longer up there, and we were coming from Minnesota, we didn't quite want that. And so we, we looked around the perimeter of the hills, and Sturgis just ticked all the boxes. It was, you know, close to Rock City, it was close to, you know, I mean, there, you know, there were a number of communities that we could have we could have ended up in any of them, but it just so happened that we found a piece of property five miles out of town, and I'm still there. And uh, that's where we moved. So, so, and, and so that's really, you know, that's, that's why we're here. It's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful place. It has so much going for it that many other places in the United States do not have. I'm with uh, Susan Helgeland. I'm Dee Dee LaRue's sister. And I'm John Tygan's mother. And he moved here from Denver. I never thought he'd leave the Rocky Mountains. He moved here about 19 years ago, and he stayed and built out in Boulder Park, and I'm rented a, they built a place called the Boulder Park Casita for me, and I live there, and my husband has Alzheimer's, and I came back to be with family because of him. But I just want to say one thing about Sturgis. I have known about Sturgis for 50 years, because my sister and Maury lived here. We visited all the time, and the girls, Teresa and Carol. But, and I've always liked it, but now that I live here, I have to say to all of you who are living here, you are so nice. Everyone, I have never ever lived, and I've been here a year and a, about eight, seven months, I have never met anyone who's been mean or cross. I've had a lot of people open doors for me in Linz. There are gentlemen that give you a cart and tell you, take mine. I mean, it's the sin. It's a whole community of niceness. It's just so special. And I'm 80 years old, and I've lived a lot of places. I've never met a bunch of people that are so collectively courteous and respectful and just doggone nice. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else have any questions about businesses, comments about businesses? I just, I just want to say one thing. I, I just wanted you to know, you have not met Ross Lanfear. <laughs> <laughs> that was
Rose Gordon Kotab, by the way. <laughs> Why you why you sturgis has survived? I think it comes back to um, the assets that I talked about. Um, history. Our, we have a strong sense of history here, um, and our strong sense of community, um, and that speaks to what both Pat and Susan talked about. And then also the recreation that's available here, and um, our small town charm. So I I believe that's why we've survived. I think we got some pretty awesome churches in this town too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Speaking of churches, I was gonna. Um, uh, I go to Believers Fellowship, and uh, one of the when I was doing Second Street, I thought, well, it's not fair that the only one on Second Street that I picked up was the library. It's like I could go and tell the story of. Um, my church started in the front room of the glass shop, which is now a bar. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> Actually, it's not a bar, it's a brewery. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a bar, it's a brewery. Anything else? Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you to the panel. Don't run off, I got something for you. Yeah. So, just a second. Yeah. The people that are agreed to participate in history at high noon are wonderful people that are willing to make our program successful and uh, we deeply appreciate what they do so on behalf of the Sturgis Arts Council I have a little gift for each of you.